Hi there and welcome back to Planescape Torment. I am Byron and we are still in the Smoldering Corpse Bar. In the last video the Con joined our party of merry adventurers and now we will talk to the other inhabitants here. We have Drusilla here. Alright. Fine, let's talk to Drusilla then. Hi Drusilla. This is a woman with fading bruises on her face and arms and a look of despairing longing in her sunken eyes. She might have been pretty once, but those dirty days were long ago. She turns slowly to face you. Life pours into her features and a spark of sardonic light that dances in her eyes now makes you wonder if your eyes were deceiving you. Welcome to the Smoldry Corpse, Scarred Man. Scarred Man. Well, who are you? I? I'm Drusilla, and you must be clueless. Don't ask me how I know that. It just shines off of you. Clueless? I think not. She smirks at you and her bruises seem almost to fade. Whatever you say, dearie. Whatever. Please don't pester her with the journal. Okay, we do it, nevertheless. A journal? Oh sure, I have kept an eye out for all stray journals. Just in case some scarred man walks into my favorite bar and starts asking about it. Do you ask that of everyone you meet? What a fascinating life. Oh, Drusilla, I love you. <laughs> this is so fucking true. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, you have a smart mouth on you, don't you? And she's actually true about this one. You're an idiot if you ask anybody, just any person you just meet about your fucking journal. How are they supposed to know? I a smart mouth for a smart head. It ain't the adult cove you might think, sir. I've got a brain on me. Well, if you're so smart, you should be able to answer my questions. What can you tell me about this place? Here? This is the smoldering corpse, though the person smoldering ain't dead yet. He just... He's just keeping himself alive till someone comes along to help him out. Sort who... Sorts who like to see people in pain come here. Fiends like it. Folks who don't much care for being bothered come here too. The name alone keeps out most of the Bergs. Who is he anyway? Updated my journal. <coughs> that despair you saw on her face before flits across it again like a black winged shadow before she masters herself. That Zygnus, one of the greatest wizards ever to come out of the slummy excuse for a cesspool. They caught him and they opened the channel to the plane of fire through him and now he's just the doorway for it to keep himself alive by force of will alone. If someone could douse him for a few moments, I'd give him his life back again, but they don't make enough water to do that. Hmm. What's your connection to him? Her voice practically throbs with a deep ache. I was Ignis' lover and he my beloved. He loved the flame more than me and now he has become the flame. And because I love him, I love the flame. But that's all done with now. Now I wait for him to douse himself. I sell what little I have just so I can be near him. Oh, that's just a very sad story actually. Hmm, I'm looking for a collector by the name of Farad. Have you seen or heard of him? Farad? She snickers. The Collector King? You can probably find him and his good in his stinking ilk in the trash warrants on the far side of the hive. Good luck in getting any answers from him. He's a sly devil, he is. And that's pretty much it. Goodbye. So, that's Ignis, apparently. Hi, Ignis. <coughs> this crackling, billowing creature twists slowly above an iron grill and apparently doesn't hurt the nameless one. Upon the floor of the, of the bar, it may have once been human, but now its skin is charred beyond recognition. Streams of fire form a wreath around the creature's body, and the flames lick at the few remaining pockets of flesh, causing them to bubble and run like wax down the creature's skeletal frame. We examine this morning corpse. The heat surrounding this creature is incredible. To your surprise, the iron grill the creature floats above has sagged and bent from the heat. At first you thought heat came from the grill, but now you realize it emanates from, emanates from the creature. As you watch, flags of ash drift from the writhing corpse and float slowly to the ceiling. Greetings? The thing makes no response. It drives slowly within the flames. It lives, but it does not seem aware of anything other than the fire that surrounds it. 
Its skin is flame, its heart is flame, and you know within your shadowed core, within some shadowed corner of your memory, that this thing is dangerous. Okay, let's leave it alone then. Who are you? Mokai. You see some. I didn't really talk to that one, he talked to me. You see someone dressed as a female dustman with a half empty glass in her right hand. As you near her, she calls out to you. Um, you, over here. You notice that there's something wrong about her, and your exposure to the dustman leads you to believe that she's just too lively to be a real member of the faction. You approach her. Hey, Kata, buy a lady a drink? You're not really a dustman, are you? She looks around nervously and seems to sew right up. Why, um, why do you say that? Because you don't act like a dusty and you're not offering contracts. In fact, you're talking, taking money in instead of giving it out for that corpse labor they do at the mortuary. She stifles a squeak of terror and hastens to explain. No, 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 no. I'm not a dustman. I just found these robes in the street and I didn't have enough money to get good clothes and I uh, heard here was a dustman thief around but you could probably find him somewhere else in the southwest part of the hive. I saw him but I hid from him. Please don't hurt me. I'm not planning on it. You ought to know that you're not pulling it off too well. Now answer some questions. Um, what do you want to know? Who are you? Me? I'm Mokai. I'm just like... I just like to um, drink here and... Um, she tosses her train of thought momentarily. She loses her train of thought momentarily. I'm just a person, you know? Mm -hmm. What is this place? Smoldering Corpse Tavern. Can't you read? You um, more bub than I am? Actually not. Tell me about the other patrons here. I don't know. They're just um, people. I don't deal much with people. Unless they're buying me a drink. She looks at you hopefully. Mm -hmm. Not... I'm not going down that road. Who's the burning corpse? Corpse. Um, he's not a corpse. He's um, some crazy wizard. Ask around. They'll tell you the story. Okay. That wasn't too helpful. What else do we have here? This metal table is scarred with talons, knives, teeth, and the marks of innumerable tavern brawls. Like the air around it, it is warm to the touch. These sturdy pylons support the ramshackle roof. These red hot pipes remind you of torture devices. Apparently, they emit steam. Who are you? If you're just a patron, I probably don't need to talk to you. But I will try it once. This is a woman with a far off cast to her face. She's not exactly young, nor is she exactly old. Perhaps it is the expression of slight disbelief that's etched across her features. The expression says that she doesn't believe her senses. When she focuses on you, she speaks sharply but not angrily. Do you need something? Who are you? I'm Kinaros, Kinaros Thorntongue. I'm here with my cousin because my uncle doesn't want me wandering the hive on my own. He doesn't seem to think I'm competent on my own. He may be right. I don't know this city or this plane very well. I'm not from here. I'm from the Prime. From the Prime material plane? The Prime? What's that? Damn. She cocks her head and looks at you oddly. The Prime material plane? The place where the, belie the, the believed outer planes are shaped of is born, the world, stars, moons and so forth, belief and reality, I sure hope you know what the prime is because it's an essential part of planar knowledge. I knew that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would say now. Oh, please don't bother with the journal. Sorry, I'm new in town and I can assure you I haven't seen anything that I'd recognize as a journal, though I am told that something that appears to be a person could in actuality be the journal for some other creature. I'm still trying to get my head around the philosophy here. It's a little overwhelming, but they say if you stick with it, it becomes much easier. I'm looking for a collector by the name of Farad. Have you seen or heard of him? A collector? I don't believe I've heard the term. She pauses, thinking. Is that one of those haulers of the dead? The poor folk who collect the hives, innumerable victims for money? Yes. From what I understand, they mostly congregate in the areas of the hive that are farther from the mortuary, where there's more life and more violence. You, 
your best bet might be to concentrate your search away from the House of the Dead. She's actually a nice point here. Ah, what can you tell me about this place? This is, I understand, a smoldering corpse tavern named after that fellow near the entrance. From what I can see, it's a dive where scum mixes with cream to <laughs> create an entirely unappetizing, unappetizing new flavor. Of course, being from the prime, my perception might be jauntest. Uh, you're from the Prime, what are you doing here? Visiting, expanding my horizons. The Prime is a fine place to live, but it's a little too real, I suppose. My uncle gives each of his nieces and nephews a few years in the plains and allows us to remain here if we so desire. I think I might so desire. I am fascinated and repelled, but then I suppose that's the nature of the plains, isn't it? Yes, I understand this. Uh Oh no, okay, that doesn't lead to anything different. Who is that burning by the entryway? That is Ignis. He attempted to burn down a portion of the city some time back, centuries, and was punished by being turned into a living flame. A nasty flame, but fitting uh, a nesting fate, but a fitting for a known pyromaniac and arsonist. For what I've read, it'd be best to leave him well alone. Well, we already had that. No, we didn't have that yet. How do you know so much about this place? Aren't you a prime? The Uncle Seelan and I share... And I... The Uncle Seelan and I share is a wizard. Oh, that's apparently Seelan here. Who makes his home here. He brings his relatives to the plains on occasion to show them the delights and horror of the horrors of the multiverse. I wanted to be sure I was ready for the trip and so I prepared myself extensively. Oh, she's a clever girl. I probably know more about the city than my cousin who's lived here his entire life. She just she just just despairingly at the man nearby. That's quite an uncle. Can I ask you some other questions? Uh what was that you and your friend were saying about Sigil? He's not my friend, he's my cousin. He was just telling me that this isn't the center of the multiverse, despite it being located smack in the middle of the outlands. Despite it being the focal point of portals from all over the cosmos, there isn't a known place with more. Despite all the quarreling the gods do over it, despite the sheer vari variety and concentration of power that accumulates here, there is no place like this in the cosmos. And he's telling me it's nothing special? Ha. Huh. That's an interesting perspective. Perhaps you both have elements of truth? Perhaps you are correct, but I find that such relativism is often beyond me. Either the place is important or it is not. Paradox may fuel the planes, but there must be sense to it somehow. Not necessarily, but I haven't time to argue this right now. Instead, I'd like to ask some more questions. Or maybe not. So let's talk to the brother or cousin or whatever. This is a slightly balding man with a cynical cast to his face. He speaks in a staccato voice, rapping out each word distinctly and clearly. What do you want, Kala? Who are you? I am Siline Irontos. For you ask, I got the name because my idiot brother dropped the 50 pound stone on my feet and crushed my toes. Now I have iron toes, alright? Alright, I suppose. Yeah, I'm looking for a journal. I haven't seen one. At least not one that stuck out in my mind. If it wasn't valuable, try the trash mounts on the opposite side of the hive. I sympathize with your plight. No, it's, it's just a journal, man. Journals are the very essence of identity, are they? They keep us aware of our past and help us plot our future paths. I always keep a journal myself, and I find... I always keep a journal myself. And I find I am a better person because of it. He says this last with self-satisfied relish. You're not kidding. Well, do you know Farad, a collector? Isn't that one of those nasty dead haulers? I don't associate with that type. This isn't my ward, really. So no, I've never heard of him. What is your ward, then? I live in the ladies' ward with my uncle. It's generally a better class of person there if I may say so myself. None of the riffraff that you see floating around here so much. No, I'd say that coming to this area is definitely slumming. I 
can't say that I enjoy it, but then I'm told one should experience a wide variety of life's offerings. I'm just about done with this one. Mm -hmm. What can you tell me about this place? This is a smoldering corpse. I have brought my greenhorn clueless prime cousin here to see some of the sights, smells and sounds of Sigil's beauty. So far she, re she remains unimpressed, yet yeah, she's not as so clueless as you might think. Gotta drink something. Well, who is that burning in the entryway? Chant has it that the unfortunate fellow's ghost by the name of Ignus burned down a portion of the hive before the folks here got together and took care of him. They made him a conduit to their mental elemental plane of fire. Now he has to writhe there for folks' amusement. Not too amusing, but interesting, certainly. Um. What was that you and your friend were saying about Sigil? Ah, my cousin. He stresses the word as if to emphasize that he has no choice in his acquaintance. Has recently come here from the, her backwater prime world. My uncle, a renowned wizard, brought her here to expand her horizons. She labors under the delusion that this is the center of the multiverse and she thinks it is somehow important. Since I've lived here my whole life, I know otherwise. It's a place the powers and plane born overlook, just as humans overlook the squirrels in their city parks. It is not important, and the sooner humans come to realize they are not important, the better off they'll be. Really? Hmm, I'll have to hear her justification for this. In the meantime, can you answer some other questions? Uh, wait, do we have to talk to her again? No, that doesn't lead to anything new. Goodbye, who are you anyway? Take Garen. Can I get to you? You see a scaled fiend who looks very similar to the one standing next to him? Well, this one or what? In addition to the pierced left ears, both are black hued and reptilian. With bad wings tucked against themselves, this one has a small scar under its left eye. Greetings, old comrade. It's truly a joy to see thee again. Again? What I mean, dear man, is that time is what I mean, dear man, is that time our old enemy has performed a vicious disservice on you. It rubs your memories and steals your recolle recollections. If you do not recall us, why? It is because you have fallen prey to one of mortality's weaknesses. We are old friends of yours, old indeed. What can we do for you? I had some questions. Some questions. Oh no, he talks. Okay. Ethelgrin, what's the name of the other one? Smoldering, no. Ethelgrin and Tigarin. Okay. Some questions, perhaps we have answers. We are certainly eager to aid you, old friend. Who are you? Ah, Ethelgrin, time has robbed our companion's memory. You honestly do not recall us, do you? Truly, I am aggrieved. But, as am I, Ethelgrin, truly aggrieved. Yet I rest easy. It has, after all, been many th hundreds of years, and we know how the minds of mortals tend to dissipate with age. Ah, well spoken, old friend. We are a pair of Abishai on leave from our current assignment in Bator. I am the Garen, the thrice damned, so named for my ability to find the best in every situation. This is a Thelgrin who has earned himself no special name, though not for lack of trying. Lack of trying? What do you mean? Ethelgrin ignores you as it responds to its companion. And once again, Theagrin, you have cut straight to the truth of the matter. Though perhaps it is best not to have earned the sort of notice one uh, bearing the name Thrice Damned must surely have incurred. <laughs> Boss, I'm sure, more sure than ever that these berg ain't on the up and up. Sounds to me like they deserted, like they're looking for some angle that'll elevate their status in battle. You don't want to be talking to them, boss. You don't know what game they're playing, and you could get burned, literally. Yeah, but I can always reload if things go to hell in a hand basket. Why, is that a little floating skull I see? There's a lovely sweet scent of Petorian decay about you, my pretty. Perhaps we should discuss this 
Later. Wait, he's from Bartor? The Abishai returns its attention to you. Now then, you said you had some questions. Yeah, what are you doing? What are we doing? Why is it not perfectly clear, old friend? We are on leave from our beloved assignment, taking for ourselves some much needed rest and perhaps in using some additional recruitment for our glorious cause. Our superiors fully support our presence, to be sure. Really? In a more immediate sense, we are taking our entertainment in this delightful establishment. And of course, we are celebrating the return of our old friend. However, the stench of the breezes, which occasionally waft the scent of goodness in the door, debases us somewhat, leaving us physically, mentally and spiritually weaker. Fortunately, the air in this ward of the city carries a delicious tang of pain and supplication. Wouldn't you agree? Again, the fiend, the fiend smiles broadly at you. So, what is this place? This is the Smoldering Corpse Tavern, one of the more entertaining taverns your kind has seen fit to erect in the city. And the poetic justice of the burning fellow at the front of the establishment is really quite a fine touch. Was there something you else wished to ask? Yeah, of course. Tell me about fiends. As we see it, there are two kinds of fiends. Those who are correct and those who are not. Our side, that of the Baatetsu, is of course correct. The other side, that of the cursed, hated, chaotic Tanari, is incorrect and must be exterminated. Behold, the Tanari directly responsible for the blood war. Were it not for them, we could have settled the lower plains in peace and wouldn't have all the bother of fighting this wretched war, nor would the unfortunate spillovers into other places be such a cause for concern among the Nambi Pembuing do-gooders. The Tanari are directly to blame for the multiverse's sad state of affairs. Uh, that's not really what I was asking. I wanted to know what differentiates, differentiates you from them. The fiend pauses a moment and then brightens. Ah, yes, you see, we represent law and order. Those who break the law must be punished. If we have no law, we have only anarchy. And surely you can see what anarchy has done for the Abyss. It has spawned horrors beyond imagining. Any excesses the Bartitsu state may have indulged in are simply to counter the rising tide of chaos represented by the Tanari. We mean no harm to anyone, we just prefer to understand where the boundaries are. Yeah, it's like the... The Bartitsu are lawful evil and the Tanari are chaotic evil. I mean, as long as they get the evil ones are killing each other, I'm fine with that. But, like he said, apparently there are some spillovers in, into other planes as well. And that's bad. <coughs> and has to be countered. Do you know a collector named Ferret? Ferret? I have heard the name. Is he not a sage of some sort? A necromancer? Or is he, is he a diviner of rubbish? I've heard of him, friend, but do not have the pleasure of his company. Perhaps one of the other patrons here can help you. Perhaps. <laughs> I'm going to pester them about the journal too. I keep no journals, friend, and I counsel that you should not either. Ask my dear comrade Tagrin why and you shall receive enlightenment. Very well, Tagrin. Why shouldn't I keep a journal? Because, friend, it is easy to make the mistake of committing a true word to posterity and easier still for someone you once trusted and here he shoots a glance full of venom at Ethelgrin to find that word in use against you. Instead it can even lead to actions tantamount to desertion. Leaving or losing a journal can cost you your very existence. Yeah they have this thing with the true names. If you know the true name of a creature you can control it. Apparently he wrote down his true name in a journal which is a very stupid thing to do. He found it, and then used that knowledge to force him to desert. Interesting. Morty whispers to you, Boss, I don't like this. They're not supposed to be here. The Blood War hasn't kicked the Celestials' asses bad enough that any fine fiend can go on furlough. They want something. Treat carefully. In the meantime, Tagrin continues to respond to his companion. Ah, well spoken, old friend. We are a pair of Abishai on leave from our current assignment in Bator. Um, we already had that. Okay, alright, Morty, I'm done with them. So, well, maybe we, since 
we have some new information, uh, sorry, about Morty, maybe we should talk to him. Let's see what happens now. Uh, hey, what's eating you, Chief? <laughs> you said you're a meme, right? Uh, no. Apparently I can't ask him about that. Okay, well, whatever then. Alright. Alright, he says. Who are you? There's a person standing here. Isn't that a person? It looks like one. Mercy killer patron. Yeah, but there's no circle underneath this person, so apparently not. Let's talk to the Mercy Killer patron. An armored behemoth. This man is huge. He also seems to have a very keen eye. It misses nothing that transpires around him. It also seems that he has no interest in speaking to you. Hello. The man stares at you as if you were some form of bug. He stares at you, blinking slowly. He turns his head, then dismissing you without speaking a word. Um, hello? You hear a subterranean rumble beginning deep in the man's chest. He lightly strokes his weapon and stares at you with renewed interest. If that's the way you want to be, farewell. I'm not attacking him. Are you as well spoken? Oh no, you can actually uh, t uh, talk to him. You see a grizzled burly man in spiked armor. His, he eyes you coolly up, he eyes you coolly and slowly up and down evaluating you. He pauses for a time on your face, almost as if it jogs his memory somehow. He sighs then <coughs> and says, can I help you with something, friend? Who are you? Me, I'm Tana. What's with the outfit? It's a uniform of a kind. We are the Red Death, Mercy Killers. We are the Justice folks. Someone commits a crime, we bring him to justice. We right wrongs too. You want to know more? Go talk to one of the recruiters. Fair enough. Uh, who are your friends? They're Caleb and Ilsidon. Caleb's the new meat, a new recruit, and Sidon's the muscle. I'm the brains. Wait, there's the third one? One, two, where's the third one? I don't see him. This one? What are you doing here? Waiting for a criminal. This will be Eager Caleb's first arrest. If the Berg we are waiting for he ever shows up. What are you? Some kind of police force? Is that what your armor is? A uniform? Yeah, we already had that. Uh, but there's more here. So who are your friends? What are you doing here? Oh no, we already had that, okay. Do we get anything else out of that? Yeah, okay, that's, this only leads to the uniform, fine. Did you recognize me? I thought I did, but those pictures are centuries out of date and the suspect be dead by now. Of course, these are the planes and stranger things have happened. Still, if you're the fella I'm thinking of, it looks like you've served your sentence by means of pain. What can you tell me about this person you're talking about? It was a particularly brutal criminal from what I understand. This was, of course, centuries ago. Immense strength, they said, and enough anger to tear the head from a barrier. Or is that some kind of animal? Not a sod to be messing with. Word is he got himself surrounded by a red death patrol, escaped through a portal and hasn't been seen since. They have pictures of him. Take away some of the scars and you might be related to him. Probably not him though. Sounds like a nasty fellow. Exactly. Who are your friends here? Yeah, we already had that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm looking for a journal. Du, du, du. I've seen far too much on the mean streets of Sigil, friend. 
Unless this journal was some spectacular chances are good, I ain't seen it. Um, have you ever heard of a collector by the name of Farod? I'm looking for him. You're looking for him, eh? From the tone of your voice, I'm betting it won't be for a quick drink down at the local tavern either. See, I know Farod of old. He is a slippery one, he is. And it will be a time before we can pin something on him. Problem is, only a fanatic like Vaylord scragged the guy without even a shred of proof. That's all a long way of saying I don't know where, he, where the sword is, but you ought to know he's a suspect and it won't do you any good to be seen with him. Thanks for the advice. Uh, tell me of this place if you would. This? This is a small ring corpse. Chant is this place is full of portals and such, but then that's true of most anywhere in Sigil. Good cheap drinks and if you don't mind the company of babos and fiends, it ain't a bad place to be. You want to know more about the place, talk to the bartender or something. Alrighty. So he was friendly. He not so much. Now that we talked to his friend, maybe we can talk to him again. Where, where's the third? Oh, here's the third one. Hey, stop moving. Fuck off. You see a lad who barely looks a day over 18. Oh, that's a new recruit. His face seems to betray some tension. Help you, Cutter? Who are you? I'm Caleb. I'm a mercy killer. Oh, he is the muscle then. I'm here with Tana and Ilsidon to catch my first criminal. What can you tell me about the mercy killers? Well, they... Sorry. I have to get used to saying that now. Uh, I believe that justice is the most important thing in existence. I believe that without justice there is no meaning and without meaning we might as well just go off and kill ourselves. I don't want to kill myself so I decided justice is the meaning. If you want to know more, you ought to ask one of the other two or find one of our recruiters. They'll talk your ear off. Okay. I'm looking for a journal. A journal? Sorry, no. I'm still new here and I'm not all that connected yet. If I see one, I'll let you know. Wait, wait. Well, it's just a book, man. What are you doing? Well, seeing as I'm a new mercy killer, I'm supposed to bring a criminal to justice to show I can handle the field work. I decided I wanted to catch a killer, so we've asked around and got told he was going to be here. Still haven't seen him, though. I'm a little nervous to tell the truth, if you'll excuse me. I really ought to get looking at the faces here again. He cranes his neck and looks around the bar. Just a few more questions, then I'll let you go. Has the killer shown up yet? No, not yet. But Tana says that this is where the criminal is supposed to come eventually, so now we play the waiting game. I'm looking for a collector who goes by the name of Farad. Would you happen to know where I can find him? Can't say I've heard of him. Is he a criminal? Maybe we'll pick him up later. My thanks for the tip off, citizen. I just need to find him, not get him killed. Can you answer some other questions for me? Who are your friends here? There are the people who are here to make sure I don't foul up this assignment. Tarnas, the old one. Illusion is the one who is here to make sure I do the job right and to give me support if I need it. He swallows noisily. I hope I won't. What can you tell me about this place? this place it's the smoldering corpse I think they named it after the guy near the entry it's a place where criminals and low lives hang out still there are some cutters here who know what they're talking about some of them are those fiends though and I don't like to deal with them I feel like they're staring right at my soul I understand what are you doing yeah we already had that goodbye so, well, All right. he doesn't talk, does he? No, he doesn't talk. So, how about All we right. call it the video then? So, thank you very much for watching. And see you soon.